program is still Core Digest exclusively on Core TV News. And of course, we've been looking at the Nigerian oil and gas sector. And I have an interesting expert in the house, Runke or Nadeko, who has actually done justice to some of the issues we've discussed. But as we go on, you know, we talked about the fuel subsidy, the fact that should it be removed or not. But of course, Runke is not just um, experienced on the fuel um, aspects. She's also very, very, very grounded on the oil and gas sector as it is. But before Runke does justice to that particular issue. Let's just go back to 2012 and let's see um, a renowned pastor in Nigeria, Pastor Tunde Bakari, who was very active during the fuel subsidy crisis that rocked Nigeria. And of course, a lot of people thought a revolution was about to happen. They are saying that the rally at Ojota Park is being sponsored by politicians. What do you say to that? No. But let me make this plain. Neither the Labour Union, the Labour Congress, or TUC Trade Union Congress is behind your total rally. Not to talk of any politician or political party. The same patriotic spirit that led the same Nigeria group to mark the streets of Abuja and Lagos when Jonathan was being prevented from performing the constitutional duty of an active president has motivated the same Nigerian group and its allies to put this peaceful, peaceful rally together. We did not collect money from Jonathan then and we are not being sponsored by any politician now. Today, the world is a victim of propaganda because of people who are not internationally competent. More than anything, Nigeria needs effective citizens competent to do their own thinking. Let me make it clear once again, this rally at the Ghanifa Emi Freedom Square is a civil protest organized by the same Nigeria group and its allies. This is not a political campaign rally. No citizen has been paid to come. They have come on their own. Some walking several miles every day to get here. Did we pay you? policy of the government and I want to thank you here that you brought your own water you brought your own food you got yourself here Nigeria will flourish again I say Nigeria will flourish again Nigeria will conquer our cankerous the will of the people of this country will be heard and will be done number two propaganda they say we have made this rally a personal thing because we are cursing the president and we are personalizing the issue. And we respond with three quotes. Two or three quotes. One from the Bible. Proverbs 26, verse 2. Curse, curse, we will come. It does not matter who curses you. It does not matter who curses the president. Runke, that was the leader of Save Nigeria group and, of course, a pastor that is well-respected in Nigeria. What do you make of the comments he made during that protest? The key things that I heard him say very clearly was, one, the government is not efficient. We don't trust the government. There's so much opaqueness in how the industry is being run and what monies and how monies are being spent. So there's the issue of transparency and accountability. There's the issue of corruption. There's the issue of inefficiencies that are mentioned. How do you mean the government is not efficient? In society today, you need less resources because of technology to get the same things done. Nigeria is growing in size. 
20 people are doing what one, one efficient person can do. Oh, they shouldn't make people, civil servants, lose their jobs. So we're, we're bloated. Everything is too expensive. Everything is done. It takes a longer period of time to get things done. You, you can't run a country like that efficiently. It doesn't work. Right now, if Nigeria is importing fuel, somebody, there's a group in PPPRA that determines how much oil we need to import. Then there's a whole process of how we are going to get it. Then, you know, it goes to middlemen who are importers and this and that to bring it in. In other countries, there's a website. Okay. They determine how much oil they need to import. There's a tender, an electronic tender, that's run by an international company. And people who have that fuel to supply says, well, I can supply you X amount of fuel for such and such a price. The government look at who the best quality and the cheapest price is, and they sign an agreement with you, and it's delivered. You talked about the civil service being bloated. Or it is bloated. What happens to unemployment? Won't that give, um, increase the, the cases of unemployment in the country? No, it will not. On the contrary, it would spoil employment, because all the money we're putting towards subsidy it would be put into other industries like sorting out our power problems. If power problems are sorted out today, everybody is ready to set up a small business. A vulcanizer who is, you know, has to buy a generator to put beside him. A seamstress has to have a generator. A hairdresser has to have a generator. That's where all their money is going. So business is not profitable. So people are sitting in the civil service to guarantee an income because the enabling environment to set up thriving businesses that are profitable don't exist. So the government should please focus on giving us an enabling environment where entrepreneurs and business people can go out and make their own money without being handicapped. We have a new government now. How ready do you think this new government is to actually take up all of these advices? Well, since we're talking about Nigeria oil and gas after May 29th, you know, they're just a few days old. We've heard some of the things that they say are important to them. We're waiting to see the crop of ministers that are going to help the new president deliver his promises to Nigeria. That would be a start for us to see how serious they are. And I've heard of something called the Buhari meter, which is supposed to be a hashtag where every single promise Buhari made during his campaigns are going to be tabled. On a weekly basis, they're going to review and see how well he's doing on each of those promises. And the minute they feel he's being derailed, civil society is going to be on top of those things to make sure that all the promises they made are delivered. Yeah, Buhari Mita, you say. <laughs> that is correct, Buhari Mita. We, we could see that play out. Um, of course, recently, Nigerians started um, making noise about the fact that he appointed two spokesmen, and they're saying, isn't that a waste of resources, just like he said he wouldn't do while campaigning? Do you think Nigerians are being too overzealous, or do you think it's the right thing to do? Nigerians have suffered quite a bit. So if Nigerians are sitting back now and saying, we're going to watch you every step of the way, every single thing you're going to do, we're going to criticize, it's going to let the government realize that this is not the old Nigeria, where Nigerians would sit back and just complain in their houses. Nigerians are becoming vocal. They took an active part in the um, installation of the president we have right now. So they're going to make sure that their voices are heard and that the government keep hearing from them. Should this government be the scapegoat of Nigerians? Well, it's what it is. We're not going back to where we were before. Just a few days ago, we were talking about, you know, women in government and whatnot. I said we don't want 30-something percent. We want 50. We're not going back to 30-something. 30 30-something 30 was the last regime. Everything has to be moving forward. Mm. So let's not say that, you know, two spokesmen or whatever. I don't care if he's paying them, you know, what he paid one person. But if Nigerians have an issue about it, they have a right to discuss this, to bring it to the table. And he should justify to Nigerians why he's done what he's done. Okay, Ronke, what should Nigerians know about the oil and gas sector as an expert? The first thing I would enjoin Nigerians is please, 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 please support the deregulation of petroleum products, all petroleum products. There are too many inefficiencies, there are too many scams, there are too many things going on that we can't control. Full, total, once and for all deregulation is the best thing that Nigeria would be able to do going forward. One, we don't have money in our coffers. Two, we can, we, it's expensive subsidizing petroleum products. And then we're not the only ones benefiting from the subsidy. Some of this oil that is subsidized by the Nigerian government end up in other countries. All the other countries around us that are landlocked are benefiting from it. So we're supporting 
petroleum, the petroleum industry in other countries. And this is supposed to be Nigeria's benefit. Mm -hmm. So let's stop it. Let's all buy fuel at whatever the cost is. And then hold the government responsible for the money that they've saved. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of times we hear that Nigeria is broke. Nigeria doesn't have money. But no, daily in the newspaper we see money laundering billions of naira dollars. And we have the president who, while he was campaigning, he said that there will be no tolerance to corruption, that everyone who has stolen from Nigeria will be pro. But now, in a speech, he said, past um, administration should not be scared that he's not going to probe. What do you make of that? Whew. Well, I'm not, I wish I, were, I had the air of Mr. President to speak to him directly. I think we need to set a precedence concerning corruption in Nigeria. Corruption has been going on for so long unchecked, people need to be brought to book. People have done wrong things, and I don't think it's the place of the president to determine that the laws of this land are not enforced. That's the attorney general's responsibility. So Mr. President personally might feel, well, I don't want to go after anybody, but if the attorney general of the federation finds proof that somebody has broken a law, I'm sure he will prosecute the person. Mm. Investigations will take place, and you know there will be you know, a civil suit, whatever, you know, to prove if the person is innocent or guilty. There might be people who we think today are guilty and if investigations are forthcoming, you know, they find out that they're not, but maybe they will find some people guilty. And if those people are found guilty, I think they should be brought to book and their assets should be confiscated and brought back into the coffers of the country. Because that's Nigeria. If they've stolen, it belongs to Nigerians. Okay. Uh, for, for those that stole, would they actually the public... If the alleged to be people, people who that we think stole because nobody has proven you know anything for now okay. so until they're tried investigated tried and found guilty we don't have any proof that anybody has stolen to date okay now there's also an economic stealer that a lot of nigerians are actually aware about which is the oil bunker what implication does that have on the oil and gas sector in nigeria first and foremost everywhere else outside of nigeria oil bunkering means supplying fuel to ships that's what oil bunkering means. But in Nigeria, it means stealing oil. But that's only peculiar to Nigeria. So I just wanted to put that out because if you go to Europe or you go to other African countries and you talk of bunkering, mm -hmm. it's legal and it's a business. Right. But in Nigeria, what we call bunkering is illegal and it's oil theft. As at 2013, I think that was the last time I had proper statistics. The quantity of oil that was stolen in Nigeria on a daily basis is equivalent to what Ghana produces in its entirety in oil. Really? That's how much oil is stolen. Wow. Yes, and it's a lot. It's stolen to be refined. There are local refineries. People have, you know, locally made refineries where they refine, which is a waste because you lose almost 80% of the value of the crude oil. But because the 20% they gain is free of charge, it still makes sense for such people. On the other hand, there's the theft that goes into barges, are taken to big vessels and are discharged in there, and then the bigger vessels are selling this oil in the international market. Mm. There's that going on as well. And um, information has it that this is been, it's been a trade that because it had gone unchecked, it started very small. Mm. Because it was unchecked, it grew and grew till it's now almost 50-50. Half of what we produce gets stolen, half gets into the government coffers. Mm. So if we could even stop that, we would double the revenue we're getting from oil and gas. Mm. Stop that? How could the government really stop it? There are different ways of doing this. Oil and gas pipelines and facilities can be monitored via satellite. So there has to be political will. The government has to be very interested in doing something about it. They have to deploy honest means to doing it. There have been stories of people who have been given contracts to watch pipelines and watch oil facilities. These people are not tenured. They're not professionals. They have no expertise. It's been done on an ad hoc political basis. So we need to stop all of that and work in a system that's consistent and professional. OPC monitoring oil pipelines, how justified? Well, we, that happened very close to the time of election, so there's a lot of belief 
that it was um, politically motivated to inspire followership in the southwest of Nigeria hmm. towards the voting and the elections that just took place. However, this is a new government, this is a new dispensation, this is a period of change. I think every single one of those contracts need to be revisited. The government need to have a criteria of who should be eligible to do such a thing, what qualifications they should have, and what the end result is. We don't want to hear that somebody got a $3 billion contract to watch pipelines and the theft is not reducing. If not, it's increasing. Mm -hmm. We're still losing oil. That person's contract should be cancelled. How really sincere do you think the Nigerian government is to um, combat on the challenges um, facing the oil and gas sector? Because um, one would remember at a time where the petroleum minister was alleged of uh, a fraudulent acts pertaining to the oil sector, but it just happened that there, nothing was really, there was not um, justified conclusion to the old matter. So how sincere is the Nigerian well, government? Well, I mean, that, there was a government that ended on the 29th of May. There is a new government started on the 29th of May. You know, they're just three or four days old. So I think Nigerians should hold their breath. Let's wait till the National Assembly is um, instituted, I think, in a few days' time. And, you know, we're going to evolve, but Nigerians need to be watchful. We need to pay active participation in governance. We cannot sit in our homes on our iPads and on our phones and send BB messages that they should be doing this. We need to get out there. If there is a rally, leave your house and go and join the rally. Let your voice be heard. If you have a house of rep, Represented, representing your area, know who the person is. Find out what the person's contact details are. If you're hearing things or sensing things, reach out to your house of rep person, reach out to the senator in, you know, from your um, local government or from your area. These are the things Nigerians should start doing, and I'm seeing more and more of it. Okay. So I think there'll be more accountability in this government. Okay, so Nigerians should um, more action and talk more, less. Well, talk, but please, let's see the action. All right, thank you, Ruka. Let's go on this quick short break, and we'll be right back. Okay. Stay tuned, please. Every day of the week, we we'll bring to you divergent views on news making the headline. These people who commit crime are being rewarded with national honors, with national appointments. Then where are we going in this country? It's not about who, whether it was Jonathan or whether you are going to have a buari. It's the kind of political structure we run. Sometimes it gets confrontational. We are talking about a buari who at 41 became head of state. The man did not exhibit the attribute of somebody that is strong intellectually. So, Comrade, you're saying if you become governor, you're going to bring back Okada? Of course. You will bring back the market women from the streets? Me, don't put words in my mouth. On Core Digest, we we'll bring all of this to the court of public opinion, where you are the judge. Women share the most amazing thoughts on national issues. And they do it passionately. For most men that are educated, that are exposed, will not will see nothing to it. The population and the, the level of poverty made me cry. No infrastructural development whatsoever. And you tell me Lagos is working? That was an accident. And it was a one-off thing. Other than that, there has never been any situation in Nigeria where a Nigerian attacked anybody just because of where they came from. Sharing the adorable word of women in politics every week, only on Core TV News. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as a savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions.
I'm particularly excited at this course and this issue. I hope you are at home. Of course, it's something that affects you and me. And I have an interesting guest who is doing justice on the topic today. Now, Ronke, recently um, from the president's speech, um, you know, he talked about the program of the Niger Delta ending in December. And of course, the Niger Delta have risen up to challenge that statement. Do you think they would really pose a problem to his administration? Um, I don't think they will. I think the Niger Delta issue has been handled significantly well. When there was a crisis, they were able to engage them. They were able to find out what their issues are. And I think they're on the, they've gone beyond the primary level. They're at the secondary level now where, you know, they've been given an opportunity to acquire new skills. A lot of money has been invested in that area. And I think they have something to build on. They cannot be at an amnesty forever. So, I mean, this is as good a time to end it as any. And, but they don't, they don't seem ready for such an end. Well, no baby ever gives up the milk. It's the mother that snatches away the milk and puts the solid food in front of them. So we will test. I think that it's good that the government will test them out without the amnesty. If they find out, of course, that you know, there are still areas that are weak or still need to be strengthened, I'm sure the government will not be insensitive to something like that, to re-intervene if there's need for, but they cannot be on, a, on you know, this amnesty forever. I mean, I would love to be on an amnesty whereby all my bills were being taken care of you know, indefinitely, but it's just not realistic. And quite frankly, the government cannot afford it. And, and do you think the government has actually prepared a room for them to move over to or something they could do differently than when they don't get the amnesty program of course so we don't have them um, more like sabotage the effort of the government at the end of the day i think there's um, an understanding now that the oil industry is the bane of our economy and everybody has seen the fact that we haven't managed it properly has affected all nigerians even the people in the niger delta so we need to focus on infrastructure development using the funds from the oil industry and the government coffers to support infrastructure, good roads, rail system, electricity, primary health care, primary, secondary, tertiary education. Those are the things that the government needs to be putting money to across the entire country. Now the PIB, you said it dragged through the last administration. Yes, it did. What are your expectations of the Buhari-led administration on the PIB? There are a few things that I would suggest that the government do. The, the PIB needs to be passed in some form as quickly as possible because we're losing investment and we're losing revenue okay. from the non-passage of the PIB. I think it needs to be broken down into smaller bits. We don't have to deal with all of the PIB at the same time. The part that involves international companies coming to invest in Nigeria should be pulled out and dealt with. Right now in Africa, Oil has been found in Ghana, in East Africa. Every day, we're hearing of new discoveries. Mm -hmm. The money that's coming to Africa for oil and gas exploration is limited. It's not, fi it's not infinite. Mm -hmm. It's finite. So if Nigeria is not positioning itself properly and we're not ready, this money goes to other markets. By the time we sort ourselves out and now say, yes, you know, we figured it out, the monies would have gone elsewhere. So we need to quickly get our act together and put a front out to the international world saying, we've sorted out our issues, we know what physical terms we're going to work with, we know what kind of investment we're looking for, this is who we are and this is what we're looking for, so that we can move on. And then the other issues like who gets what and how much of what goes to the Niger Delta and to the people who own the land, those things can be sorted out in smaller legislative um, instruments. Okay. Runke, you sound very passionate about PIB. I am passionate about and, the PIB. And uh, the question that beats me is, do you really think the handlers of this bill are actually the one dragging the bill? Because if, as according to you, it's going to actually bring more benefit to the country, why has it not been passed for so long? Too many stakeholders. Okay. They're not all on the same plane, or they're not on level playing field. And, you know, we have some people who are troublemakers in every sector. Some people who, no matter how perfect the bill looks, are still not going to be satisfied. We cannot wait till everybody is happy to have this move on. So what we think should be done in the industry is certain aspects of the PIB need to be expunged for now. Let's roll with those things that are critical, and then we can deal with the other things later. Okay. Now, what are the prospects of the oil and gas sector in this new administration? 
everything looks very rosy for me at the moment. Wow. But that's with the fact that I believe this government has a mind more or less to carry all Nigerians along, those that voted for them and those that didn't. Mm -hmm. It's been said more than once that he's for all Nigerians and he's for nobody. Well, a comment that actually generated a lot of A reaction. lot of controversy. And I mean, I think that's good because that's a government of uh, an inclusive government. Okay. We're not leaving anybody behind. We're ready to talk to people from the other party. We're ready to work with them. If you have a good idea, bring it, put it on the table. Let's talk about it and let's move forward. It's all about Nigeria. We've gone through the election process. That's behind us now. So what we're thinking of now is moving forward, carrying as many people along as possible and building a stronger and better Nigeria. Carrying people along. How would... How is he expected to carry people along in the oil and gas sector to make it better than it already is? We need to be a bit more transparent. Okay. Nigeria is such a large country, 170 million people. If you went on the street today and you spoke with different people, maybe you'd find 10% of Nigerians that really understand what the oil and gas industry means to them on a personal level. Hmm. I'll give you an example of that. Okay. Nigerians do not understand how their children's education have to do with oil and gas. Oil and gas is not a sexy topic. It's not a topic, if we were talking about Beyonce or fashion in Nigeria, a lot more people would tune in today to listen to what's going on and what's happening and how can I key into it. But oil and gas, people just think it's for some specialists and they will sort it out because they don't understand that every single thing that happens to you as a Nigerian is based on oil and gas how much the government is producing, how much the oil prices are internationally, how much of the money we are making is ending up in the coffers and being used to develop Nigeria. Hmm. So are you saying ignorance on the part of Nigeria is actually a big... Nigerians are not aware. They need to take more of an interest in their source of income. Okay. It's just like if you're a worker and somebody asks you, I said, how much do you earn? And you're like, well, I don't really know how much I earn. That's impossible. We're Nigerians. What we earn is from what we sell, from what, when we sell oil. That's what we earn. So that's our salary. So all of us should have our eyes on it. When we produce, we should know how much we produce. Mm -hmm. When they sell, we should know at what price they sold. How much is it costing us to manage the industry? Mm. So Nigerians shouldn't sit back and let a few people manage their salary. Would you let your child or an incompetent person manage your salary on a monthly basis? <laughs> you won't. So why are we so laid back about the source of income for the country? Okay. So what are your expectations from Nigerians now? My, my expectations from Nigerians are they need to focus a lot on what the government is doing. Who gets appointed as the Minister of Petroleum? Okay. Who becomes the Managing Director of NNPC? Are they going to deregulate? How soon are they going to deregulate? And if they're not going to deregulate, what are they going to do differently from what they're doing now? Because what's being done right now is not working. How can Nigeria influence this appointment, really? Well, I voted. Okay. I had to ride a bicycle from one part of Lagos to another part of Lagos because there was no vehicular movement. You rode the Just, bicycle? I rode a bicycle to go and vote. Wow. And we were there from 11 o'clock in the morning till 10.30 p.m. at night. I couldn't even wait to, you know, to, mm. for the counting. Because when I rode my bicycle in the afternoon, it was broad daylight. When I was going home at night, there was no light. I didn't take a light on my bicycle. I had to risk my life. So now I'm interested in every single thing to make sure that the risk I put myself through, the stress I put myself through, doesn't go to waste. Do you foresee Buhari-led administration as a listening government, actually? We are going to make them listen. This is not whether they are listening people or not listening people. Nigerians should make them listen. We should make so much noise and drown them to the point whereby they have no choice but to listen to Nigerians. Wow. This is our future. This is the future of our children. So oil is not something that is for experts or for um, the politicians or for the government people. It's for every single Nigerian. So those 444,000 barrels a day that goes to the refinery, that's not working. We should challenge it. We need to start challenging the things the government are doing. The poly if the government tells us now that they're not going to deregulate, they have to come up with very, very valid reasons why they're not deregulating, how long they think they can continue for this way, and what they're going to do differently. Hmm. 
some have actually predicted that um, Nigerians really cannot resource to the refineries. Some have actually said that, okay, um, we actually have to bank on importing the product. And others have the opinion that if the whole system is going to shut down, it should shut down, but the refineries should be resuscitated and the government is actually in the middle. What is it that the government must do? I think the government should give up the dreams of the past where governments were involved in refining. It's not government's business to do any business as commercial. Government's business is regulation of industries, reforms, policy. They're not businessmen. They should stop running businesses. They don't run businesses well. When they had NITEL, it never worked. They've privatized that industry. They've given it to businessmen to run. Everybody, my vulcanizer has a phone. My meat seller has a phone. It's working. Let's give up the things we're not good at and give it to people who can handle it. So I keep hearing stories of the fact that maybe the government are still thinking they need to refurbish the refineries. There is no need for them to refurbish the refineries. You want to move on, sell the refineries exactly as they are. If you find buyers, fantastic. If you don't find buyers, then let go of it. Okay, thank you very much, Renka. Final words from you as a round of on the, on the show with you today. I'm hoping that um, the government going forward are going to pay attention to three things very urgently. The first one is removal of the fuel subsidy and full deregulation of the oil and gas sector. Second thing is that the B PIB needs to be passed like yesterday. The last thing is the development and the enabling environment for a thriving downstream industry, refineries to be built, petroleum products to be produced. Nigeria should be a net exporter of petroleum products. We should not be importing petroleum products in Nigeria. But unfortunately, it takes time, it takes strategy, it takes political will to have this done. We hope that the government will focus on these things and we will be there as Nigerians, keeping a watch on what they're doing going forward. Thank you very much. Um, of course, it's five or six days into the new administration and let's hope the government listens strongly to Ronke's suggestions, which he strongly hold on to. And of course, Ronke, I see you at the forefront of pushing this PIB to be passed in the nearest future. I will do everything that's humanly possible to make Nigerians aware. I tweet, I blog, I talk about oil and gas, and I think the government will start listening when more people start paying attention. All right. Thank you very much. That was Ronke Onadeko on the show today, an oil and gas expert. It was really a delight having her on the show. But you know what? Do well to join me after this break um, as, we, as I round off the program alone. But of course, it's bye-bye now for Ronke. Thank you once again, Ronke. Thank you very much for Have having me on the show. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you. It is often said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. But what about the things in life that actually inspire us to believe? Like the things that drive us, the things that move us, and even the things that remind us that the sky really isn't our limit. Because when we are inspired, we are led to future greatness. But first, we just have to believe. One day I want to build Nigeria's first aeroplane. I know. One day you'll make us proud. Rich and creamy peak, extra fortified with 20 vitamins and minerals. Here's to 60 years of nourishing dreams and inspiring the future. The future is bright. Reach for your peak. I really want to appreciate you for staying this long on the course of the program. I'm, I'm hopeful that you enjoyed every bit of what we discussed. And like my guest on the show said that it's good that Nigerians are a lot more interested in this topic. Because it's not fashion, because it's not food, because it's not water, it doesn't mean that it really, really affects every bit of our life and we should start seeing it that way and of course Runke has said that the PIB really needs to be fast the sector has to be deregulated for we as Nigerians to benefit from this uh, money-making venture that we are looking away from actually and of course she said we need to really engage the government so it's a call to all Nigerians not to sit and fold their hands but also be active in the governance of the country of course be very active 
active participate in what the government has for the country. And with time, the country, the, 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 actually the government will actually see that there is a need for them to look into the sector, which is faster, fa faster um, dwindling, like a, a lot of reports will show us. But as, as, an, as a Nigerian, actually, I hope you are a bit charged on the decisions you should take and how informed you are on this particular sector. I particularly um, was elated with all of what we discussed today and of course as we discussed Nigeria oil and gas sector beyond May 29. So it's beyond okay we have a new government now but you know let's start talking about this issue. Let's start looking at how differently it could be from previous administration and you know what with time we would see that the country is a better place and you know like the president's speech that we have an opportunity now let's take it so the oil and gas sector presents a lot of prospects it's an opportunity let's take it as high time i round off the show this morning but you know tomorrow is another time on call digest as we bring you more enlightening and mind mind bogging issues that you are interested to know more about and of course from experts who are quite knowledgeable in this area my name is omotayo Alo. it's still a beautiful tuesday morning thanks for staying with me till this very point have a beautiful rest of the day you can now watch call tv news live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Cool TV, leave a space, then news. Cool TV News, a 24-hour news station.